So there was back and forth talks for a while, but now the deal is officially done. Variety is reporting this morning that Disney has finally bought its official the film and television rights for 21st Century Fox, totaling out at $52.4 billion. Mm. <laughs> no, so guys, it's finally done. And what did I think about it? Well, let's get into it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion for this latest news this Thursday morning. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into all the nitty gritty, help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button. Also click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads and also give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. Now, there have been talks back and forth for a number of weeks now, a couple of months ago, that Disney is going to be acquiring assets for the, or the film and TV assets for 20th Century Fox. No one knew necessarily at the time how much money it will be, if it was going to be $60 billion, $70 billion, $50 billion. But now we have all those answers. This is a huge deal. Of course, there is a ton of details that we can comb through. I'm probably not going to be able to cover them all here in this video, especially things that I want to cover. But we're going to go over the highlights and, you know, you can comment below and what you think and what you are excited about for the future for film and television with Disney and what makes what things that you may be a little skeptical about as well. But Variety is reporting Disney to buy 21st Century Fox assets for fifty two point four billion dollars in historic Hollywood merger. And um, it also says that Disney, the CEO, Bob Iger, extends his contract through 2021 to oversee the integration. Now, I read this article, but it is extremely long. I'm just going to read this first paragraph here and then go over some bullet points. And then we're going to talk about what I think about this and, you know, what I'm excited about and things that I'm a little skeptical, skeptical on. And then we can just go from there. But it reads. Let me make sure, let me get this a little bigger. The Walt Disney Company has set a $52.4 billion all-stock deal to acquire 20th Century Fox and other entertainment and sports assets from Rupert Murdoch's empire. If you didn't know, Rupert Murdoch is about 80 years old and he is the head over 21st Century Fox. The deal between Disney and 21st Century Fox marks a historic union of Hollywood's heavyweights and a big bid by Disney to bolster a core and TV film business against an onslaught of new competitors in the country content arena. Key elements of the transition unveiled this morning. The deal values 20th First Century Fox assets in the transaction at 66 0.1 billion, including 13.7 billion in 21st Century Fox debt or a $28 a share. The enterprise value of the deal is 69 billion. Disney Chairman CEO Bob Iger, Bob Iger, excuse me, has extended his contract with the company for another two years through the end of 2021 in order to oversee the integration of assets. I just said that. 21st Century Fox shareholders will receive 0.2745 Disney shares for each Fox share, hell, giving Fox shareholders about 25% of Disney. Uh, 21st Century Fox uh, will spin off Fox Broadcasting Company, Fox Sports, Fox News, Fox Television stations, and handle other assets into a new company that will have a revenue of $10 billion in earnings of about $2.8 billion. The 20th Century Fox lot in Century, in Century City will also remain the spin off Fox Company. All right, three more bullet points. 20th Century Fox will continue to pursue its acquisition of the remaining 61% stake in Euro uh, Satcaster Sky that does not already own with the intention of Disney taking it over with Disney Fox transition is completed. Disney expects to realize $2 billion in cost savings from combining Disney and Fox overlapping business businesses within two years of the deal's closing and last one disney expects the regulatory review of the acquisition to take as long as 18 months so you know this is worth multi-billion billion billions of dollars tens of billions of dollars so of course you know there, there's a lot to have to sift through so this is going to take 18 months to two years and that makes sense to me and just real quick you know everybody's reporting this uh the murdoch's fox empire 20th century fox um, I'm going to divide this into cable network programming, film entertainment, other and television. So Disney will uh, will take control over. This is the cable networking program. Uh, Amstrad, 
LAPTV, Sky Place, Star TV, and Tata Sky. In the film entertainment, they will, of course, take her over 20th Century Fox and Fox Studios Australia. Other things that they will take control of is National Geographic Partners and also Hulu. Now, Disney already had about a third of the per- third percent stake in Hulu and 20th Century Fox or 21st Century Fox had the other third. But now that they've acquired them, they are now the majority shareholder. And I'll go back to that in just a moment. And as far as television is concerned, Disney will now acquire Indomo Shine Group, Fox International, Fox Network, Fox television stations and National Geographic channels. They, Disney will not acquire Fox Business Network, Fox News Channel, and Fox Sports Media Group. So they, they will not acquire those three. But everything else that I just mentioned, they will acquire. Now, I just spoke about Hulu. And uh, Netflix is, uh, I don't know necessarily who's winning in the streaming game. But, of course, Netflix and Hulu, those are two large competitors uh, in this game worldwide. And like a lot of people in the comments, not in the comment section, but when people are talking about comic book stuff, you know, I've seen some comments like Disney is only acquiring Fox because that in humans failed on TV. And, you know, that's the replacement of the X-Men. And they are trying they want X, the Fox now just for X-Men. No, that doesn't make sense to me. At least that is not the case at all. This deal is much bigger than that. Um, Disney, a lot of the Disney properties have been on Netflix now, uh, their streaming services, but Disney, the large conglomerate that they are, they are a part of the big six because all of the media, of course, in this country is controlled by like six companies only, you know, like well, how many met with well, 330 million Americans. And it's uh, most of the media is controlled by six companies and Disney is one of them. And Disney had a lot of their assets with Netflix or whatever, but they want to be in control with everything. And I can't really knock them for that. Um, So they have been talking for a while that they're going to have their own streaming services. But now that they have the majority shareholding of Hulu or whatever, that could be their um, their new uh, streaming service or whatever. And just take all their assets away from Netflix and then integrate it into Hulu. And in my opinion, that is one of the main reasons, probably not the only reasons, but one of the main reasons that this deal goes down because Disney wanted their own streaming service and they wanted more content because just be honest with you, I was just saying myself, okay, Disney, okay, they have a lot of content, but do they really have enough content to have their own streaming services? Well, somewhat they do, but now they have a whole bunch more. So, you know, that just makes sense to me. Um, That does get me excited. Now, um, something else that does interest me in this deal to most, I'm going to be honest with you. I am not a diehard, like, you know, sports fan. Uh, I, I do watch sports, but you know, Disney is not acquiring Fox sports media group. Um, and you know, I like alien, you know, I'm really into film, especially in TV. If you know me for a while and watch my videos and read my reviews and things like that, you know, so it's, you know, like other movies like alien and predator and you know avatar and you know things like that you know okay that's going over the dc now that's fine no big whoop it really doesn't matter to me anyway but what most excited me about this whole deal is disney acquiring the rights to all their comic book properties okay this deal is much bigger than that but that is what's most exciting to me and so that's what i want to talk about now um of course they have the rights to deadpool right now and all of the x-men and the mcu has been great in the past nine and a half years because it started in may of 2008 with iron man and so you know majority of all of their properties are going to be back under uh disney now so that's great now universal still owns the distribution rights to the incredible hulk and you know so the hulk can pop up in that but they can't have like a solo hulk movie because they will have to give some of that chunk of change to universal and of course sony still owns a uh, majority of uh, spider-man peter parker but they now uh, have all of x-men which is great they all have now a deadpool but what gets me most excited was that they would acquire the rights to the Fantastic Four, the first family and Marvel. But in all this deal, it is not necessarily clear if Disney is going to acquire the rights back to uh, to, uh, the Fantastic Four because I initially, when all these reports came out, I thought that they would, but it was now brought to my attention that I found out uh, not too long ago that Fox did not necessarily 
own the rights. I mean, they own the production rights, but they didn't have the licensing or the distribution rights to Fantastic Four. There's another foreign company by the name of Constantine Films that owns the distribution rights to um, to the Fantastic Four. So I don't know in this deal if Disney has the Fantastic Four yet, but I hope they do. With all the money, please just cut them a reasonable check, you know, and get those right best because I really would love the Fantastic Four in the MCU. That would just really make my day. Like, just seriously, you know, we can get the Fantastic Fantastic Four, Doctor Doom, Galactus, Silver Surfer, and so on and so forth. So I hope that happens. Uh, you know, if Disney does acquire the rights to the Fantastic Four, all you easily have to do is after um, the Avengers 4 that comes out May of 2019 have a, a Fantastic Four origin movie. If I was Kevin Feige, if I was Alan Horn, the president, uh, well, the president of Disney of the Motion Picture Studios, or Bob Iger, I would not announce any MCU films until um, Comic Con of 2018 at the earliest. If you can wait to Comic Con 2019, that would even be better. The reason why is during now, now until those films come out, you, you don't want a PR nightmare. You want the press and the media and fans all around the world to focus only on the properties that you have a firm stamp on, that you have a firm script on. Okay, you don't like So right now it's December 2017, February 2016, we have Black Panther, May 4th, we have Avengers Infinity War, and then mid July, we have Ant Man and the Wasp. March of two, you know, so. Comic-Con 2018 will come after um, Ant-Man and the Wasp. So until that time, you want our press, our fans, our media to focus only on Black Panther, Avengers, Affinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp. When you're promoting Black Panther, you don't want them, oh, the deal is going down. You know, you announced a Fantastic Four. Who's going to be cast as this? Da, da, da. No, no, no. You don't want that or whatever because stuff could accidentally leak out. No, you want people to focus on those movies alone. March of 2019, that's when we have, uh, what is her name? Captain Marvel movie. Um, then May that we have Avengers four. And then I think in July or sometime after that, that's when we have the Spider-Man home coming too. So if you can wait until even then to make your announcement, you can start working on it now. Of course, if you have the rights, you can start, you know, doing this and putting the script together, but just wait. Okay. So I'm hoping that in 2020, which is a little over two years from now, the first movie that we're going to get in 2020 after an amazing spot, not the amazing spot, but Spider-Man home coming too. Is please give us a Fantastic Four movie. If we own the rights, give us an easy origin story or whatever. That can be great. I mean, that can just be perfect. You know, you could just make it up, put it in there. Uh, I would like that to be the first film in 2020 from the MCU, if not, you know, later that year or 2021. I, if they've acquired the rights, if they worked it out with Constantine Films, I don't see how that is not possible or whatever, because everybody wants a Fantastic Four movie. So, um, you know, we got that there. Now, people are going to be wondering, like people are like in love with Fox as far as their uh, comic book properties are concerned. They started out okay, and they have gotten a lot better with um, X-Men First Class, Logan, and Deadpool. Uh, X-Men Days of Future Past, that was a very great film as well, but I did like X-Men First Class better. Apocaly X-Men Apocalypse was a, a very big disappointment. Of course, we have Deadpool 2 coming out next June, and then New Mutants coming out sometimes next year. I'm on the fence right now with the New Mutants, but I am really ecstatic for Deadpool 2. Um, I forgot the point that I was about to make. Um, what point was I about to make? Oh, now people are worried about, you know, since Logan and Deadpool came out and those are rated R properties that, oh, I don't know if, you know, Disney is going to make R rated movies. Now, you know, I made a video like a week or two ago about this and I was a little worried that I'm not worried about this now because for, let, let's t take two things right now. First of all, Disney is already making R rated content with their Netflix shows. With The Punisher, Seasons 1 and 2, Daredevil, Luke Cage, uh, all of that. all Except for like maybe Iron Fist, which kind of sucked. But they're already making R-rated content. So they're going to be making R-rated content with uh, X-Men or whatever. We can have a, we can have an X-Men uh, series on uh, Hulu or whatever, or Netflix or however they work it out. Or we can have, um, uh, well, 
no, I'll take that back. Not an X-Men series. We can have like a Logan R-rated movie or Wolverine movie, or we can have a, a, a Logan origin story or a Wolverine on Hulu or whatever and make it rated R. It doesn't. They've, they're already doing that now. And the second point is, until this time, Disney didn't own any R-rated content or whatever. They didn't own Deadpool, which is R-rated. They didn't own Wolverine, which is R-rated. They didn't own Blade necessarily, or maybe they did own Blade, but you know they're waiting until they bring that to the the forefront they didn't own like carnage which is an r-rated uh spider-man property i mean disney has co-deals with them now but they're not going to make a carnage movie you know out the top out the gate that would be stupid now sony's doing that with venom right now which i'm completely disappointed about so people just saying this disney did not have any r-rated content to put out in the first place and then the R-rated content that they did have was with Netflix, with all the Netflix shows. So I'm not worried about that at all. I think that would just be fine. As far as the continuity is concerned with Deadpool, I think that they should keep the continuity or they can reboot it. But if they keep the continuity with Deadpool by himself, I'm perfectly fine with that. You can keep Ryan Reynolds in the role because he breaks the fourth wall. That will work. He could literally look at the screen doing a movie of some sort and be like, hey, you know, I'm Deadpool. Are you confused now that I'm playing the same part and I was over at Fox? Now I'm at, I'm at Disney. Well, it doesn't matter because the deal went down like this and then da 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 and da 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 all right back to the action and then he goes and kicks his butt that will work perfectly fine because that's within deadpool's character so you know we have fantastic four taken care of check we have deadpool taking care of check now i would as far as x-men is concerned they do need to reboot that i don't want the continuity that they have with x-men at 20th century fox to have anything to do with the mcu no because while they did great with x-men first class and x and days of future past Overall, with X-Men 1, 2, and 3, and X-Men Origins Wolverine, and whatever else they put out, I'm extremely disappointed, and I don't want that to have anything to do with the MCU. So they need to reboot that just entirely or whatever, and I would just be completely happy with that. Now, as far as Hugh Jackman, me people just like, oh, Hugh Jackman, he's great in the role. He's played Wolverine for 17 years. You know, I, I love you, Hugh Jackman. You know, you you know that's what's up to you, my brother. But at the same time, you know, I do want a rebooted uh, a, a Wolverine character as well. I do want to show. Up, I I did enjoy you in the role, but at the same time, they didn't just you know knock you out the park with your adapt with the um, adaptation of your character or whatever. Wolverine is much shorter, and much stockier, and you know, and that's fine. And plus, Hugh Jackman said himself in uh, in the promotion of his latest film, The Greatest Showman, which will be released, released in theaters on December the 20th, he doesn't really want to come back anyway. And he could change his mind, but, you know, I doubt it. He's tired of working out two to three times a day and eating nine times a day and all that good stuff. Plus, even if he were, were to come back, and, like, there's another pundit that was talking about this, John Campion. Shout out to John Campion. It wouldn't make sense for him to come back. He's going to come back for, for one movie and then or or two, maybe. And then you will have to reboot it. Uh, that just doesn't make sense right there. And and also a lot of fans are like, oh, maybe they can put Wolverine in Avengers 4. No, 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 no. That will be a horrible idea. They are filming Avengers 4 right now and they just have this script intact and it's time with Avengers Infinity War. So why would you just shoehorn in Wolverine's character at the end of or Deadpool at the end of Avengers 4 or at a post credit scene? You're writing yourself into a corner. No. I don't want to see X-Men, Deadpool, or Wolverine, and Avengers 4 at all. Let all of that come later on. Take your time, take your time, take your time. You are Before this deal went down, Marvel Disney already had enough content to last us fresh new movie ideas all the way to 2050. Seriously. Now that they have all this, I mean, I can be 99 years, 100 years old, and we can still be getting new fresh content. I mean, it is just that rich. Like, look at this. The whole Marvel Encyclopedia is just thick of content. I mean, you know, look at it. So we don't need to be shoehorning in. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. We have enough time. I got another. And, um, oh, crap. I got my DC Encyclopedia here, too. But we're just talking about Marvel. Uh, but, yeah. So take your time. They don't They don't need to pop up there, um, you know, in Avengers 4. I think that's just a horrible mistake. Now, what else about this deal? Uh, now, just for fun or whatever, uh, I would like to see this in an animated 3D movie, not a live action movie, because it would I'm trying to make sure my mic is sitting with my head. Sorry about that. <laughs> 
Um, I, in an animated 3D movie, I would like to see a crossover of the Avengers, X-Men, Star Wars, Alien, Predator, Planet of the Apes, you know, whatever. In an animated 3D movie, just for fun and, you know, craps and grins or whatever. Do I want to see that in a live action? No. That would just be crazy. Just too much over the top. No, 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 no. But just for fun or whatever, you know, I, I, I would go check it out in the theaters. I will buy it or whatever. You know, that will be just, you know, badass. The Avengers and the X-Men teaming up against Galactus and, you know, uh, you know uh, Thanos and Kane the Conqueror and Darth Vader and the Sith. You know, all them. T- you know, that that would just be kind of cool to me, or whatever. But you know, that's pipe dream. You know, we can stay with the live action stuff for now. So, um, I want to make sure there's nothing that I'm leaving out in this. Uh, you know, in this movie. Now, of course, it would in this deal. Of course, uh, some people would be sad because you know maybe we're not because right now we probably get about six to eight comic book movies a year. We probably won't get that much because you know first it was just two movies a year for Marvel Disney. Now we're getting three movies a year. Um, and then Fox was putting out two to three movies a year as well. So that's five. And then, you know, Warner Brothers DC was maybe putting out one or two. Well, that may drop down. Uh, but that's fine. You know, if we get if we get four to five movies from Disney, uh, hopefully five or whatever, that would be great. I think that, you know, maybe Disney, they can have. It, OK, first of all, if they do already movies. Yeah, they already do already shows on Netflix, and that's going to be over going over to Hulu most likely. Um, most likely, they're going to put the already series on 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 the streaming service or whatever. But if we do, if Disney does give already movies, I think we should get one already movie per year, and that should be released in January because January is a uh, uh, kind of a toilet bowl season for movies. And this will reinvigorate that month for big blockbuster properties. And also, there would be no con- there would be no competition as well. Now, you also want to spread these movies out um, amongst all studios because you know bringing Warner Brothers and DC into this, the box office for Justice League is crap. Okay, it doesn't even look like they they're not going to get to seven hundred million worldwide. They may not get to six fifty, but comic book fans like myself we're gonna go see it regardless but the general audience is not so we need justice league and other film studios their comic book properties to do well because that will help marvel do well a rising tide raises all ships so if disney is putting out stellar excuse me guys i'm I'm sorry my my throat i'm about to die here i need to take a sip of water excuse me okay i just couldn't do it anymore i was fighting it um if, even if Disney is putting out content that's like 9.5, 9, 10 out of 10 each time, and they're just knocking it out the park, just perfect content. But another studio like Fox or Warner Brothers are putting out crap content that is going to help hurt, hurt Disney um, box office or whatever, because the general audience, for the most part, does not distinguish in between studios. They just see another comic book. Oh, there's another comic book movie. I think this character's popping up. Hey, kids, you want to go see it? Okay, let's go see it or whatever. You know, they're, they're not going to be able to distinguish that. So, you know, any other studio making crap content or whatever will lower the box office for any other studio. So we all need all studios, um, you know, to do well. So um, in saying that, Since Fox is not necessarily up to the part as Disney's Marvel, it will be great if we don't get as much content per year and it can be concentrated or consolidated to fewer films. Of course, if I can have 10 comic book movies per year, that would be great within all the studios. But, you know, if we have to drop that down just a little bit to have better content, to have better films, I would really like that. I would really appreciate it. So between Fox and uh, Marvel, uh, yeah, Fox and Marvel, Marvel Disney, we would get six per year. But if that dropped down to like four, I would have to accept it. But maybe five or whatever. But I would want one R-rated movie in January. Marvel Disney already has the May uh, calendar on lock or whatever. So May 1st. And you don't want things to be bunched up. I think it was a horrible idea to have Thor Ragnarok and Justice League come out with t- between two weeks of each other. 
that were just stupid to me. So we can have one movie in January, also have one movie in March, and one movie in May. And then have another movie in July. Because that's kind of what Marvel's doing next was anyway, because they have Black Panther coming out in February. Three months later, they have... Um, they have Avengers Infinity War, and then in July they have Ant Man and the Wasp. But there's like a two to three month gap, and so then they have the rest of the year for more comic book movies. So give us a comic like studios need to work it out, like Warner Brothers as well. They need to work it out to where they have one comic book movie every one to three months. So this is not jam packed or whatever, and everybody can maximize profits. Okay, so oh excuse me, I'm not worried about that. And I just want this video is coming up on 25 minutes. I want to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. If I was doing these shows live, I would be able to have a comment section. And that is coming, guys. I just need to uh, make my computer more powerful or whatever. So things are not buffering and things like that. Um, I talked about Fantastic Four. Um, I talked about Deadpool, X-Men. I talked about Hulu, streaming services. Also, um, you know, people may be losing their jobs, which sucks. Nobody wants to lose their job. But, you know, we're just going to have to see, you know, what happens with that. Hopefully they can work things out. Hopefully they can just bring some over to the staff over to Disney and, you know, be under the, the rule of Kevin Feige. But, you know, we're going to see also with Star Wars. I'm really excited because Disney owns the original uh, con the original uh, theatrical releases of Star Wars, so like New Hope. I don't, I don't want new special versions that George Lucas put the CGI in because it sucks. It stands out like a sore thumb. It, I just don't like it. So hopefully we can get the original Star Wars in like a remastered 4K resolution. That would be great. And um, I think, guys, that I've covered everything or at least that I want to talk about. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comment section below. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion for this latest news that Disney has acquired the Fox and television rights for 21st Century Fox coming out at $52.4 billion. This is a lot to talk about. A lot of money, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, franchises and whatnot are coming together under one umbrella. I'm excited. Does this deal excite you? Does it piss you off? Did my opinion turn you on? Did it turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, then I'll just leave me a comment below why. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Look me up on my website right now. Just my opinion.net bookmark it. Look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is at the bottom of the screen. And I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff there in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash um, reaction to this news. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.